Hi, this is Lisa Somerville for Divinity Designs. Today I'm here to share with you the release for July 2021. This month we are releasing three custom dies, three four by nine slimline mixed media stencils, two different sets of blending brushes, a blending brush holder, and a blending brush cleaner. Let's take a closer look at the products being released this month. We have two mini slimline dies, the mini slimline stacking stars background, and the mini slimline sunburst background. The mini slimline background dies measure three and a quarter by five and three quarters and coordinate with the mini slimline card base. When die cutting the new mini slimline background dies, you're going to have a frame panel along with the die cut image. All the open areas that you see on the packaging mean that those areas fall from the die cut. That leaves you with the open die cut panels that you see here. Here you can see the mini slimline sunburst background on top of the mini slimline card base. The mini slimline sunburst background on a completed card. In addition to the mini slimline card base, you can also use the new mini slimline background dies along with our additional mini slimline dies. Here we have the mini slimline stacking stars background along with the mini slimline rectangles die and then the mini slimline card base. And here's the mini slimline stacking stars background on a completed card. Here I've used the die to create a shaker card. Later in this video, I'll be sharing a few tutorials using some of the products from the July 2021 release along with additional Divinity Designs products. The mini slimline envelope die holds mini slimline cards sized at three and a half by six. You can see our complete line of mini slimline dies on our website. This month, we've added some new mixed media stencils. The stencils being released this month are four by nine and coordinate with our slimline die collection. The four by nine mixed media stencils being released this month are slimline netting, slimline diamonds, and slimline flower burst. The mixed media stencils can be used with both the slimline dies and our mini slimline dies. These stencils can be used with your inks, paints, and sprays, and you can also dry emboss your stencils for an embossed look. Here's a sample using the mixed media slimline diamonds. Here's a sample using the mixed media flower burst stencil, die cut with the slimline pierced layering rectangles, then layered on top of the slimline pierced rectangles and the slimline card base. As I mentioned, the mixed media stencils can be used with both the slimline and the mini slimline dies. And here's a sample of the mixed media flower burst stencil die cut using the mini slimline layering rectangles, then layered on top of the mini slimline rectangles and the mini slimline card base. Shown here is the mixed media slimline netting stencil. And here I have a few examples where I dry emboss the stencils. Here's the slimline flower burst stencil, the slimline netting stencil, and the slimline diamond stencil. And I know it's rather hard to see in the video, but here I dry emboss the mixed media slimline diamond stencil, then die cut the panel using the mini slimline layering rectangles, layered on top of the mini slimline rectangles, and the mini slimline card base. In addition to the mixed media four by nine slimline stencils, we also carry a variety of six by six stencils. Shown here are just a few examples using our six by six mixed media stencil collection. Next, I have a few products that I'm excited to share with you that can be used along with our mixed media stencils and for adding stenciling to your die cuts. We have two new sets of blending brushes. The smaller set contains three blending brushes and our larger set contains two blending brushes. You can see that the blending brushes have white bristles and a nice flexible handle. That makes blending a breeze when using these along with our mixed media stencils or our die cuts. I'll be sharing with you a few stenciling techniques later in this video. We also have the blending brush holder that's perfect for holding not only your blending brushes, but other small supplies that can easily get lost on your work surface. In addition to the two sets of blending brushes and the blending brush holder, we have the blending brush cleaner so that you can easily clean your blending brushes. 
Now I'm not going to show you how to clean the brush in this video because I need water and a sink to be able to do that. I'm simply going to show you how you would clean the brushes. You'll need the brush cleaner and some mild dishwashing soap. Simply place some of the mild dishwashing soap on top of the blending brush cleaner. Insert your fingers into the blending brush cleaner and then simply rub the brush back and forth over the ridges on the blending brush cleaner. And then you'll continue cleaning your brushes using the blending brush cleaner, mild detergent, and water. Then you'll want to rinse the brush under water and then repeat this process until the ink is removed from your blending brush. After cleaning the blending brushes using the blending brush cleaner, you can store them in the blending brush holder. Be sure to let them dry before using them again. Now I'm going to share with you a few techniques using the new blending brushes along with the mixed media stencils. And then I'm going to share with you a few card tutorials using the new mini slimline dies. And then I'll show you just how easy it is to create the envelope using the new mini slimline envelope die. As I previously mentioned, you can dry emboss our stencils. So simply follow the embossing directions for your die cutting machine and use a silicone mat. That will leave the impression of the stencils into your cardstock. Now I'd like to go over some blending brush techniques using the mixed media stencils. First, we're going to do some simple stenciling using the blending brushes and the mixed media stencils. I'm going to be doing this on white cardstock, but you can also do this onto colored cardstock. I'm going to tape down my stencil using the purple tape so that it doesn't shift while I'm using the blending brushes. For blending purposes in today's video, I'm going to be using distress inks. Ink up your blending brush and simply brush over the stencil. And then continue inking and blending using the blending brush until your entire area is covered. If you want to see what your stenciled area is looking like, simply carefully remove that tape and lift up your stencil. I'm going to come in with some darker ink and the blending brush and just apply the ink around the edges of the stencil. Then you can remove the mixed media stencil from your cardstock and die cut using the slimline dies or the mini slimline dies and use on your projects. To clean your stencils, use mild detergent and water. I've also found that the Dawn Power Wash Spray cleans the stencils nicely. But before cleaning my stencils, I like to create additional backgrounds using the ink left on the stencil. Here's a few examples using this technique. You'll simply spray the ink side of your stencil using water or any type of glitter spray for a shimmery look. Once that's been sprayed, place ink side down onto your cardstock. Then place a paper towel over the ink stencil and press down firmly. This will help soak up any of the excess water on your cardstock. Remove the stencil from the cardstock and then you can use a heat tool to help dry the ink, or you can also use the paper towel to blot up any of the excess water. Then clean your stencil before using it for its next use. Now I'm going to show you how to create this background using the Mixed Media Slimline Diamond Stencil along with two colors of ink. This time I've cut my cardstock to four by nine so that it's the same size as the Mixed Media Stencil. I've applied purple tape to the stencil to hold it to the cardstock. So that way the stencil doesn't shift when adding the ink using the blending brushes. Following the pattern on the stencil, I'm simply going to mask off one of the areas of the stencil. Again, for my blending, I'm going to be using distress inks. Ink up the blending brush and then apply the ink over the stencil. Now 
Now we're going to add that second color. Remove the tape and reposition it. We're going to cover the area that was just stenciled. And then following the areas on the stencil, apply another piece of tape so that you have another area in which to add the ink using the blending brush. Keep removing the tape in this manner and then continue inking the stencil until the stenciled area is completely covered. Now that your stenciled area is completely covered, you can remove the mixed media stencil from the cardstock. And then you can use this panel along with our slimline or mini slimline dies to create a card. Be sure to clean both the mixed media stencil and your blending brushes before storing them for their next use. Now I'll share with you two techniques using the mixed media slimline flower burst stencil. Both of these backgrounds will start out in the same manner. We're going to start out with some white cardstock, distressed inks, and the blending brushes. Next, using ink and the blending brushes, apply ink over the white cardstock. You'll continue to apply ink using the blending brushes until your white cardstock is completely covered. You can see how easily the blending brushes blend the ink over the cardstock. And now I'm going to come in with the last color of ink in the blending brush. First, we're going to create this panel here using the Flower Burst Mixed Media Stencil in our inked background. You can apply tape to hold that stencil in place. And then I'm going to add ink using the darkest color ink and the blending brush and apply the ink over the stencil. So continue adding the ink using the blending brush until the stencil is completely covered. And then you can remove the stencils. This panel was die cut using the mini slimline layering rectangle. As I mentioned, both of these backgrounds start out with the same inked background using the Distress ink and the blending brushes. Now, instead of inking through the stencil, I'm just going to simply spray water on the stencil. You can also use glimmer spray for a shimmery effect. Place the stencil over the inked background and spritz water over the stencil. You can then blot the stencil using a paper towel. The water acts with a distress ink to remove the ink from the stenciled area. You can then remove the stencil from the background. Then let this piece dry or use a heat tool to speed up the drying process. 
And depending on the size of the cardstock that you started with, you can die cut with our slimline or mini slimline dies and then use to complete your card. Those are just a few of the techniques that you can do using our mixed media stencils along with our blending brushes. We'll be sharing additional techniques using our mixed media stencils and background dies in a future virtual event. Now let me show you just how easy it is to create using the dies released this month. First, we're going to start out creating an envelope using the new mini slimline envelope die. Again, this holds our mini slimline card sized at three and a half by six. You'll simply die cut this die from cardstock following the directions for your die cutting machine. We're going to flip that cardstock over so that the wrong side is facing up. And then you're going to fold on all the score lines. You can use a bone folder for a nice crisp score. Next, you're going to want to add a thin line of score tape to the bottom of the flap. Fold in the tabs on the side and then simply fold up the bottom flap. Now you have an envelope that you can use along with our mini slimline dies. You can also add a decorative panel to the inside or the outside of your mini slimline envelope. To do that, you'll simply die cut the top portion of the mini slimline die from pattern paper. Then trim that down to fit the top flap of your envelope. Then you can decorate either the inside or the outside of the envelope flap. Now I'm going to share with you a few cards using the new mini slimline background dies. Here's the first card I'm going to show you how to create using the mini slimline stacking stars background along with additional Divinity Designs products. I've already die cut and embossed the pieces that I'm going to use to create this card. The stamps are from the Party Time Stamp Die Duo. I'm also going to be using the mini slimline stacking stars background, the mini slimline rectangle, the mini slimline card base, sentiment strips 2 die set, along with the circle and double stitched circles die sets. The white circle is die cut and embossed and then adhered to the double stitched circle that was die cut and embossed from navy cardstock. The bunnies from the Party Time Stamp Die Duo set were die cut and colored on white cardstock and die cut and then adhered to the white circle panel using barely art glue. The mini slimline stacking stars background was die cut from navy cardstock. I'm going to adhere that to the pattern paper using barely art glue. Once that's dry, I'm going to adhere that to my white base card that was die cut using the mini slimline card base. And I'll apply foam tape to the back side of the circle die cuts and the stamp sentiment panel and adhere to the card. And here's my completed card. And then I can create an envelope for my card using the mini slimline envelope die. This next card features the Ray of Sunshine stamp set along with the mini slimline sunburst background and additional Divinity Designs products. I've gone ahead and die cut all the pieces I'm going to need to create this card. This time I'm going to create a shaker card so I'm also going to cut a piece of acetate so that I can enclose the shaker elements inside my card. Again, I'm using the circles and the double stitched circles on this card. Apply a thin line of score tape to the back side of the mini slimline sunburst background. Remove the backing from the score tape and then add your acetate panel. Now that that acetate panel is in place, we're going to turn that over. Add thin strips of foam tape on top of the acetate around the border of the die cut. Be sure that the edges of the foam tape are butted up against each other so that when you add your shaker elements, they don't fall out. Remove the backing from the score tape, then add your shaker elements. Now you can cover your shaker elements with your piece of die cut cardstock, pattern paper, but I'm going to use another piece of acetate because I like to see that the panel covers without extending over the edges. Now that my shaker elements are enclosed within the die cut, I'm going to add the decorative panel. My decorative panel is one that I created earlier in the video using the blending brushes along with the flower burst slimline mixed media stencil. Now I can adhere the shaker panel to the mini slimline card base and add my stamped die cut and embossed sentiment panel. And there's my quick and easy card using the mini slimline sunburst background die along with the Ray of Sunshine stamp set to create a shaker card.
For more inspiration, visit our samples gallery, like us on Facebook, or follow us on Pinterest and Instagram.